Hey, this is Kevin with Illustrator Apps, and I want to do a quick tutorial today on how to set up a gravity form to only register a new, non existing, logged out WordPress user, but a form that can still function and still process, uh, submit um, if, a, if a user is logged in. And so what often happens is that folks struggle with getting one form to work both for offline users or logged out users as well, and new users, that is, as well as logged in users because the registration, uh, the user registration add-on tries to kick in and register existing users and then just errors out. It's kind of a little bit of, I would say, a design flaw of Gravity Forms user registration add-on the way it is, um, and one that they, I, I think they should address, but it's something that we just have to work around it for now. Uh, and so some of you might have encountered this problem, you're like, how do I get a form to know whether someone's logged in or not, and either uh, basically disable the user registration while someone's logged in and enable the user registration when someone's logged out. Right? And so this form is for our plugin Gravity Press which again will take Gravity Forms new registrations um, and add the new members to member press. And so we want that to work for both non-existing non WordPress users that are of course logged out as well as if you want to use it for your internal existing users if they want to add a new level or they want to renew their membership etc or subscription. So let's do that. We have a form here has the basics um, name email. We can even throw in a username just because some people like to have that. I, I usually use uh, the, the email as a username on my sites, but you know, let's throw in a username too just to be safe. Um, and we will update this. Now what I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is create um, a hidden field. And so, but I, I can't actually, you know, there's a couple different types. There is an actual hidden field here. Um, let me just try that. I don't think this will work, but let me just look at it real quick. Hidden field. This actually might work. Yes, this this should work. So let's, we're just, again, I, all I did was drag over this hidden field. I'm just going to name this field logged in. Let's make it a question. Let's name it whatever you want. This field, again, is not going to be to show, it's not going to show on the form, it's just for our internal usage. And so, we're going to use the uh, default value field here or the, to just select whatever we want. Now, I'm going to say either it's going to be user login or user display name. Eh, not user display name. Let's do lo login just to be safe. E let's do email or login. And it doesn't matter which one. Um, just for the sake of it, I'll just say login, user login. Now, that's all we need to do. So let's see how this works. Because again, this is not being displayed on the form. It's just for our for our rules and logic. So. Next, you know, if we're if we have a user who's logged in, we don't need to ask them what their username is again because they've already made their username. We don't have to ask them what their name is, their email. We can choose to keep this stuff in there, but we don't have to. And so, um, let's say we want to disable these fields for logged in users. Well, pretty easy. We just go to uh, Advanced here, and I just want to have it already done here. But basically, I want to click the Enable Conditional Logic, and only show this field, this username, if logged in, the hidden field I just made up here, is nothing. And that's that's how that works. It's pretty straightforward. If it's nothing, show this field. And the way uh, this works is if you're logged in, obviously, then because of the default value, that username is if you're logged in, the username is going to be filled. So this is going to be something. It's not going to be blank. And so for user for users that are logged in, uh, they won't see this field now. Same with name. Um, I can do the same thing here. And I can just say logged in is blank. And then I can do the same with the email. I'll only show if logged in is blank. So that will allow me, and let's just test that real quick. Just so we can see what that's like. So here it is, I'm logged in, right? And, and normally I would see all these fields. Let's just refresh and notice they all went away. And the hidden field's gone, so all I see now are the fields that are relevant. Now, another way we can do this if we want, because 
The problem with doing what I just did <laughs> is that when you actually when your user submits this field and they submit, let's say, uh, sorry, when they submit this form and you receive an email as, an, as a site admin, great, I have their level, I have their credit, you know, the, I don't, I'm not going to get their credit card in the email, but I have a payment confirmation, let's say that they paid, but I don't know who this is, who actually submitted this form, um, and I could technically go in and probably look that up, I guess, but that's a, kind of a pain. So an easier way to do this would be to keep these you know, to keep these mostly open or to keep these mostly uh, active. And maybe I don't want the username, but let's say I at least want to know who submitted the form. Well, what I can do is disable this, and then I want to use the uh, default value. And again, the default value just means that if you're logged in, it's, gonna, it's going to automatically fill out these fields for you. And so what I'm going to do is simply search Gravity Forms uh, merge tags, first name is usually what I do, but you can you can basically what you're trying to get to is this user merge tag piece of documentation. I'll put it in the, uh, if you're on our website restrictorapps.com and you're on one of our knowledge base articles, I'll put this in the um, in the description below the video as well as I'll put it, try to put it on YouTube as well uh, in the description. So this is a nice little page because it gives us these little handy ways of getting this information um, to fill up the default value. So all we have to do is put in um, this merge tag here. So I'm just going to go here, I'm going to put that in there, and then the field name, if we go back, would be first name. So let's just replace um, replace the square brackets with that. So, so that's first name. Then I just do it for last name, same thing. Just going to change this to last. So now and you know, I could make this hidden. If I didn't want them to have to do this again, I can make that hidden. But it, the nice thing is it'll still show up in the email that I receive as a site admin. It'll still show up in the entry. And so it's kind of useful so that, you know, if you ever need to go back, you always see that there. Again, I think for email notifications as, as a site admin, it's great to have their first, uh, first name and last name at least, maybe their email address. There's times where you want that. And so you might just make it hidden. That way it doesn't show it on the form, but at least it's being, that information is still being collected. But let's leave it visible for now. And same idea here. Now this one's even easier with the um, email. And so I, I'm going to disable this again. And I'm just going to use the default value. This makes it a little easier. Just go down and put in the email. Now let's go look at the form. And we can see that it's automatically filled out. Right. So maybe you say to yourself, well, that's great, but I don't want them changing their email address. What if they try to change it or something? I want them to keep this, the email intact. I don't want them thinking that it's, it's okay to try to update it because it's not really going to update their WordPress user email. Well, that's a good example where you might just disable, uh, disable it for the user, hide it here. Um, and then um, if you refresh now, that, e that email field is gone, but at least the information is being collected. Uh, when they submit. So that's how you do that and then of course this is the final and and one of the most important steps. This is why we started this topic today. So now we have the fields done on, on the front uh, of the form, the front end of our site, but we still haven't addressed the user registration add-on and turning that on and off. And so that's really easy. We just go down to the form setting, user registration here, and um, let me just start with a, well let me go into the one. I'll just go into this particular feed and create a user. Um, and basically, I want to just simply do a registration condition that, same thing, logged in is blank. Only turn, only register a user when the logged in field, this hidden field, has nothing in it, which would indicate that it's a logged out form, or the, the person filling out the form is indeed logged out. That means they're a new user. So that's all we have to do. And now we have a form that will only register a new user or try to when someone's logged out, but if you're a logged in user, um, you have some options about which fields to show and stuff like that and making sure that you know, people don't resubmit information that they already have with their account. All right, hopefully that helps, and uh, if you want to learn more, you can come to restrictoapps.com and, and learn more about Gravity Press and some of the other plugins that we have to help with membership sites. Thanks a lot.